Good morning. <clears throat> I got a new hat this morning. James found this one over at his office, but I had bought this one sometime or other at a yard sale to wear when I'm going to the yard sale. It keeps sun out my eyes. So I'll be using that again now that he has. I probably left it over there at his office sometime or other. So y'all having a good day? We're having a good day. God is good. Come here, Bella. Let's let's do a video. Come on, get up here. She likes to help me. Here she comes. She's a an obedient cat, but you all know she nipped me yesterday. She better not do that again today. I might smack her. So that's this hat that I can wear all different ways. And I got my rose underneath. So now I'm going to tell y'all how it was wash day in Smith Holler with my grandma. Now, grandma was babysitting me for the day on her wash day. Mom had to go somewhere, her and daddy. So, and they took Norman with them. And I went to stay with grandma. So we got started washing. And the first thing they have to do is heat water. And they had a big tub. Probably hold 20 gallons. I don't know. I was little. I was about five, six years old. And uh, so they it, they have a thing like you cook stuff outside. They did all of this stuff in the front yard. You couldn't do that big washing because they only washed every two weeks. Grandma did. So they get the fire going. They'd carry the They had to carry water. There was no water handy. So they carried water from the... You know what? I cannot hardly remember where they got the water. Oh, I know, they had a cistern, which I really didn't think about it, but they had a cistern. <laughs> what they have is, back then, and I know now, you put gutters on your house, and all the rainwater goes into this cistern, and then you pump it out, you get it out. Or you put a pump on top of the cistern, and you pump it that way. I don't remember how theirs worked. But they had to carry the water to this big pot. They built a fire under it, got the water to boiling. Then they had a trestle table where they had two big tubs. They set it on it, you know, so they didn't have to bend over. And then they had a, a warm one for doing the washing on the scrub board. And then another one to rinse your things. And they used lye soap. You used hog grease and lye, real lye, and made lye soap. If you want to make some, there's probably a recipe. You could get it from Google, probably. <laughs> That's the truth. You can get most anything uh, off the internet. That's where I get my recipes. But they would get, you didn't wash them in real cold water. You had to have it so you'd get your hands in it. But they boiled their sheets, their pillowcases, towels, dish rags. They would boil them and then take them out with a stick. Put them in the rinse, in the wash water and then wash them. And then they would put them in the rinse water. And I tell you what. It would take two of them to, to wring them out. And Mom's, uh, well, Daddy's younger sister by the name of Bash, she, she was there that day, and she was about 16 years old. And she would, uh, her and Grandma would twist things together to get all the water out of it before they put it in the rinse water. Because the water that they was washing it in was cooler. They With the scrub board, which was about this tall, and it had grooves in it, and you just went up and down. You know what? When I first got married in 1950, I was 16 years old, and my husband worked, and we got this little apartment, and I didn't have no washing machine. I There was no laundromats, kiddos, that I knew about, and if there had been, I didn't have money to go to it, and I washed in the bathtub, in the bathroom, and he worked at a bakery, and his clothes would have flour on and it was like it was terrible but I'd have to do that on my knees on a scrub board mind his clothes and I did them and that's been a long time ago 1950 and I had to do that for a long time till he decided to join the Navy and then keep going AWOL we had we had some rough roads of romance when we first got married but we hung in there daddy said I could not divorce him Back to Grandma. After you get them all clean, 
you gotta hang them on the line. Everybody has clotheslines, so you would hang them and let them dry. But you had to starch certain things. They would starch like the pillowcases and the men's shirts that they wore to church. The boys, they always went to church. So they had white shirts. So you starch them. And there was no starch in cans back then, kiddos. You made your own starch out of flour and water. You have to put it on the stove. What you do is you mix your flour and your water together to a consistency, like you're gonna make a sauce or gravy or something. Hi there, Bella. Get up here and show everybody how pretty you are this morning. Look up around, look up here. Get, get up here, get up here. Everybody loves Bella. She bit me yesterday. I yipped. <laughs> that means they love you. But to make the starch, because you gotta start your clothes. And so grandma would go in the house and make the starch and not make it too thick. You had to make it thin enough that it wasn't so heavy that your shirt ten turned into a board. So they would get it the right consistency and it was like real clear and do, do your shirt and hang it on the line. And then when you brought them in to arm them, listen to this. They had to, they had a jar, like a quart jar that you're going to can in and they had plenty of them and man, we helped with canning and breaking green beans was not fun. Appalachia, you know what? I, I was not happy with Appalachia all the time. A lot of people say it was great. Well, I like playing outside and not doing much of anything. Chasing the butterflies. I used to chase butterflies. I can remember doing it. I never caught them. Anyway, <laughs> I get distracted. I jump around. But come on, go with me. You need a quart jar. You put water in it. And when you take those starched shirts off of the line, you know what you got to do? They're stiff as a board. So you sprinkle them, and not a lot, just with water. And then you wad them up, fold them, you know, roll them, and let them soak a little while. Then you're ready to arn them on the table, kitchen table. No arning boards, kiddos. And those irons had to be heating on the stove. And you would have maybe four irons, heavy irons. And you had a handle that you could attach and detach the iron while it's heating. And then you clamp on it. And you, of course, you got to put a pad down on your kitchen table. And then you iron. After they get damp, then they will just look beautiful. And really turn out quick. Try that sometimes. Make you some starch. Put something in it you want to starch. And do it. It still works. I know it does. We did it all the time. <laughs> i tell you. Life was different. And I enjoyed it at the time. I have always enjoyed life except, you know, we all have sorrows and aggravation. Like when this cat bit me yesterday. Get up here, Bella. She right here beside me. She's my faithful friend. And I just enjoy life. And I thought I'd tell you about that. Boy, when, I might add this. When when I first got married, we lived in a small apartment. And we had no washing machine, no nothing. And my husband at that time was working in a bakery. And I had to wash him in the bathtub on my knees with a scrubber. Of course, we did have better, better soap in the 1950s. You could get the powdered soap mainly. No liquid much. And that's what I used. And it would dissolve in the water. And I did have hot running water. That apartment. Which was a blessing. You know. We did not realize how important it was. To have running water. But you let your water get cut off. For some reason or other. You find out real quick. How blessed we are. And we are blessed kiddos. Well I'm going to let you go this morning. And who knows. I might do something else tomorrow, probably. Oh, I gotta do this before I go. God bless y'all for subscribing. It's a miracle of God. That is another, I mean, that anybody would, it boggles the mind, which I still have mine so far, even though I'm 90 and having fun, me and Bella. And I just ordered me some more scarves from Amazon. 
I like to vary what I look like. When you're a talking head, you want to look a little different each day. What is she going to wear next? I don't know. God don't know. I just go through my, I just go through my scarves and flowers and pick out something that looks good. I think I'm going to start going to the Goodwill and see if I can't find me some more pins, brooches, to go on some of these. Because look, now see how you can do this? And if you got a brooch, you can put it right here. Now, I know you kids are not looking all the way to the end. Now, I want you to look all the way to the end. Because you might find something out you didn't know. I've got a lot of things I know. And it's still there. But the thing of it is, they flip around in there. But I think I'll start going to Goodwill. And I might tell you some more stories about the old-timey days. We did have fun, us kids. We played outside. We rode tars down the hill. Sometimes we'd put our little brothers in them tars. That was a rough ride. You know, an old tire. We had them. And sometimes we'd take those tires and roll them down the hill and see who's could win. We would yell for them. We'd, we'd root for our tire. And we had a good hill to roll it on. You know what? Then you got to roll it back up the hill and start again. We did that. And we had a pond down in front of our house. Now, the hogs were on one side of that pond, and it wasn't a great big pond. And we was on the other side, you know, was our part of our front yard, way down, not real close. And we just used to get in that in the summertime, and all that hogs on the other side, and they rolled and waller in the pond, and we rolled waller on the other side. They say a little dirt gives your immune system a boost. And all of us, except for a couple, are still here. But, you know, my brother Aubrey that passed, he was nearly 80. My sister died young. She got cancer and died about 60-some years old. And we were so close, but I was so mean to her. I told her she didn't belong to her family because this woman, when she was born and I was four years old, came with a big, big black suitcase. And when she left... She took her suitcase with her, but she left my little sister, Phyllis. And I thought that woman had left her. So I always told her, I said, look, you don't belong to this family. That woman bought you. I was mean. And after I got a little older, I knew better. But I didn't change the story <laughs> until I was, oh, probably nine or ten years old. Because there for a while, I really thought that woman bought her. That didn't happen. She was my little sister, and I loved her. God bless you all. I've just so enjoyed telling y'all about our worst day. And so I'll talk to you again. Have a blessed day. And walk that path where Jesus would be pleased with you. Now, i got that little thing that's going to turn it off if I learn how to use it. It came in. Amazon delivered it yesterday, but I didn't. I don't know how to use it yet. My niece is going to show me how. These younger people walk us through things, and then we can do it. Bye-bye. I'm ready. God love you.